is to on Father's Day speak as the Father. Not speak to the fathers. You know, um, often it is said that in churches <clears throat> on Mother's Day they give all of these wonderful tributes to moms. And on Father's Day they try to give dad a pep talk. And uh, that's the way it has been across the country. And uh, we're just not going there. I want to speak as a father. I am a father in more ways than one. Father's Day message to all of my children. And Lord, help me convey my heart, Lord, under the anointing of your Holy Spirit. Holy One, I pray. In Jesus' name. I'm going to point you to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Verse 15 through 17. Verses 15 through 17. <clears throat> well, the Apostle Paul is talking to the church in Corinth. And uh, he is speaking as a spiritual father. And this is where I am coming from as I bring this message this day. Paul so says, even though you have 10,000 guardians in Christ, you do not have many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. Therefore, I urge you to imitate me. For this reason, I am sending to you Timothy, my son, whom I love, who is faithful in the Lord. He will remind you of my way of life in Christ Jesus, which agrees with what I teach everywhere in every church. Paul says, imitate me, and uh, these are the things that I teach. But I want to point you to uh, the last part of the 15th verse. He says, for in Christ Jesus, I became your father through the gospel. And I feel that same way that I have become your father through the gospel. And I have led a lot of you to the Lord and I pray for you and I just kind of labor in the spirit for you. And I view you as my family, my spiritual children, shall we say. And I think that is a, it's perfectly appropriate and biblically based. And as I speak to my children in the Lord, to my daughters, I want to say, God bless you. Be godly women. Make Jesus your all in all. It is amazing what the Lord wants to do in, in your lives. You are loved of the Lord and you are precious in His sight. It is amazing how 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 incredibly precious you are before the Lord. And how so many don't see it. You're called to be women of virtue and dignity, ladies. Not the things that, the derogatory things that uh, they say about 
females, and especially in social media these days. I am amazed uh, how females, and especially in social media, which is so popular nowadays, that commonly referred to as, forget the term, bitches. It's horrible. And, and what I see in this is how the enemy wants to degrade our people. He wants to degrade the women and keep them from seeing who they are in the Lord. Keep them from seeing how precious they are before God. Paul says, as he writes to Timothy, in 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 9, he says, I also want women to dress modestly, with decency and propriety, not with braided hair or gold or pearl or expensive clothes, but with good deeds appropriate for women to profess to worship God. Now I have seen this scripture so misinterpreted that it's pitiful. I have seen people who view the word of God legalistically miss this entirely. They would read this and say, well, it's, it's wrong to have your hair all done up or to wear, wear gold or pearls or nice clothes. That's silly. Paul, that's not what Paul is saying. I want you to, to see the contrast here. First, he says, I want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety. Then he goes on to say, not with braided hair or, or gold or pearls or expensive clothes. Okay, but here's the contrast. Modestly and decently, or this other stuff. Okay, and the other stuff is seen as immodest and indecent. And what is there immodest or indecent about these things? Uh, God bless the women with the hair done up and a little jewelry on and some nice clothes. See, you gotta look behind the scenes here. You gotta look behind um, what's going on, uh, what what he says, into the the historical situation here. You gotta look into the culture, the, the historical context. That's the word I was searching for. Um, Paul here is writing to Timothy. Timothy is pastor in the church in Ephesus. All right. And in the city of Ephesus, uh, the Christians are, that are coming uh, out of uh, the, the Ephesian culture, coming into the church, they are coming out of blatant paganism into Christianity. And um, that's the part I want you to get, as one of the things I want you to get. They're coming out of blatant paganism into Christianity. Now, in, in Ephesus, um, the big pagan deity, pagan goddess that they worshipped was Diana. Uh, Diana of, the, hun of the, the huntress, they called it. And uh, the, the people would shout, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. Diana, this pagan goddess, uh, she had a big temple there in Ephesus. And she was a fertility god, goddess. And uh, the people worshipped her with sex. Okay, you get this? Um, you heard of uh, ancient cultures that had temple prostitutes. That's, what they, that's the way they did it in Ephesus. And what Paul is describing here when he talks about, I want women to dress modestly with decency and propriety, 
The women are dressed like this, not like this. Uh, the women um, that were dressing in what he describes as immodest uh, were basically the temple prostitutes at the, uh, the temple of Diana. Now, the, the modern day takeaway from this for us is Paul is simply saying, I want all the women of God to dress modestly and decently, and decently. Not like the temple prostitutes. Okay. Um, in other words, uh, don't dress like a hooker. It's really simple. And uh, it's right there in scripture. Uh, again, if people misunderstand this, they'll say, Bible says uh, women shouldn't have their hair in braids or wear gold. That's not what he's saying. And so why did God see fit to put this in the Word of God? Why is that there? Because God wants us to help, God wants to help us, excuse me, understand one another as, as our various genders. Men need to understand women. Women need to understand men. I find that each one, each gender is attracted to the other. The guys look at the girls and say, ooh, wee. That girl sure is fine. And so, with something similar to that. Girls look at the guys and say what they say when they are attracted. And they're, they know that they're attracted to each other, but they don't understand each other. And for my God has let me try to help you understand men. First of all, let me say that men and women think differently. Okay, that's what you gotta get. Don't assume that men think the same way you do uh, about many things. But the women say, well, 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 why not? What I'm thinking about, this isn't a rocket science. It's, it's one and one is two. This is just ordinary stuff. I understand, but when, sometimes when he adds one and one, he comes to a different two. It's really, it's really like that. The Word of God says to dress modestly, to protect you from the testosterone-driven desires of men, my, my daughters. I, and I wish I had more of them here to hear this. Well, I, fortunately, uh, this is uh, uh, being videoed. Uh, uh, it'll be on YouTube a little later on this evening, thanks to Toronto. God has designed it for the women to be protected, protected from the testosterone-driven desires of men. What does that mean? If you don't know, you don't understand men, which is why I'm explaining it to you. Let me say this, my daughters. Do not use your sexuality as bait to attract men. Don't be quiet on me now. Do not use your sexuality as bait to attract men. Men will notice you because they're men. You don't need to advertise. Men are not fish for you to catch. Trying to catch a man. Oh, you're messing, you're messing up. You're messing up. That mentality doesn't understand men. You can't catch a man by appealing to his lusts. Okay? Uh, lust is selfish. Period. It is the nature of lust. It is selfish. 
Lust doesn't care about the person that they're lusting after. Lust simply wants to use it to satisfy itself. Okay? And, and I'm, I, I see these things match with what Paul had to say. He says, I, I want all you good church girls dressed like this, not like those temple prostitutes. The temple prostitutes dressed that way because they were advertising what they were selling. The way they dressed made sense. Okay? And this all goes back to the idea that we are, that, the, that our women are precious before God. Oh, so precious before Him. My daughters, don't be the wife. Don't be, don't be a, a wife to a man who doesn't want to marry. Okay. Don't get into a relationship with a man who is not committed to Jesus Christ. It will save you many years of heartache and tears. I'm not going to keep you long, but let me speak to my sons. It says in the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 1, Listen, my sons, to a father's instruction. Pay attention and gain understanding. I give you sound learning. And do not forsake my teaching. To my sons, I say, be a godly man. Make Jesus your all in all. That's where it starts. You can't have it together as a man without a walk with God. It is the strong man who, who knows to humble himself before God. The man who thinks he's so strong, so macho, who cannot humble himself before God is a fool. We're called to be men of integrity who stand before God and not just the degrading things that social media would say that you are. My sons, understand that you must buck the godless trends of your peers. Proverbs 1 verse 10 says, My son, if sinners entice you, do not give in to them. In other words, don't, don't run with them. They say, come on, let's do this. And it's wrong. It'll be fun. Don't go. It's going to get you in trouble. It has gotten too many killed. Way too many locked up. We are not to be just more fodder for the prison system. My sons, learn to guard your eyes. For in guarding your eyes, you guard your heart. Guard your eyes because, you know, as the Apostle Paul says, I, I, I'm not going to say anything bad before my eyes. Mm -hmm. Guard your eyes because uh, the enemy wants to drag, drag you into the, the belly of the beast where there is lust and uh, you are attracted to the girls and some of them are working hard to make you lust after them. They try to make your tongue hang out when they walk by. They're working on it. I've heard uh, girls talking about, I'm going 
get dressed and go out tonight. Go out tonight, and uh, I got this. I got this uh, this dress that fits me just right. I'm gonna go out and break necks. <laughs> okay, what that means? They're gonna go out and make guys go so hard that the necks snap. <laughs> okay, and. Um, it is what it is. Guard your heart. Guard your, guard your eyes. And in guarding your eyes, you can guard your heart. Because the heart is the key to what brings you closer to God. The heart is what the enemy is after. Okay? And isn't it amazing that the Lord and the devil himself want the same thing? The heart. As I say, um, learn to guard your eyes. And guarding your eyes will help you guard your heart. Understand that as men, we tend to be testosterone driven. What does that mean? Well, uh, if you don't know, let me explain it to you. And, and, and ladies, listen carefully to this explanation because it will help you understand men. I just, we, 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 we have to come back to this, uh, first of all, to the idea of us being sexual beings. The hormone that drives the libido, the sex drive, is testosterone. Men have it in their bodies in abundance. Women have it too. Okay? But the thing is that men have 11 times more than the average woman. You hear that? The average man has 11 times more testosterone in his body than her. And, fellas, testosterone makes us prone to be horny. Can I, can I give it to you that straight? Yes. All right. You're not going to get mad. Uh, Pastor Bill said, you know what Pastor Bill said? Chip. Get a grip. Buck up. Let's talk about this. Test all that testosterone cruising through your veins tends to make us horny. Okay? So as I said, guard your eyes. It becomes a chore becomes a, a practice that must be developed into a lifestyle. Okay? Because we are testosterone driven. Uh, fellas, stay away from pornography. S stay away. Wish I could say that real <laughs> loud. Stay away. And there are so many pornographic images out there right now in our culture. They're working hard to see how much skin they can show you. I'm telling you, I'm in TV and uh, ads, and magazines, and commercials. There's a infomercial on TV where the guy is selling a, a system, an exercise system that will help build your butt. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Yes. Uh -huh. And uh, he's working hard to show you butts and bikinis. And that's, they, they call it the, some kind of butt builder. And uh, that's just one example of all of the uh, all of 
the media trying to show you as much skin as possible. My sons, guard your hearts, guard your eyes, stay away from porn. And porn is easy to get these days, especially because it's online. I'm saying about how we as men tend to be testosterone driven. So the average man has 11 times more testosterone in his body than the average woman. That's why I say, women, you don't have to advertise what you've got. <laughs> the boy's got all this stuff running through his veins. He will notice you if you got on a burlap bag. <laughs> okay? Because it's in his running through his veins. He's testosterone driven. Testosterone make, tends to make us horny. Testosterone makes us aggressive. And that's God's design. It is his design for us to be aggressive, to go out there and interface with our culture and make a living, to go out there and deal with the world and um, make a living and provide for our families. It calls for us not being timid souls. That, that's why he give, gives us testosterone like this. The testosterone, when channeled properly, helps us lead for Christ. So many men want things their way. It's the testosterone. What am I way? Okay. Sometimes it should be their way. Sometimes they need to listen to what sister has to say. Amen? That's why the Bible says submit to one, one to another. As testosterone makes us aggressive, resist the urge towards violence. Okay? Uh, I'm again, I'm talking as a father to my sons. Sons resist the urge towards violence. <laughs> you know, I wish they all understood this out there. Or, fellas, uh, can, you can, you, can you relate this? How many times have you just been in a mood and punching somebody in the face would just feel like the right thing to do? Does that sound crazy? That's just testosterone driven stuff. Okay? I have been there. Most men have. Okay? I can remember feeling that way one time. I was walking through Kmart. And, uh, and I'm telling you, I had, that's exactly how it felt. I need to sock somebody. Is, is, is it you? I'm serious. I was there, and I was like, and people were there, I was looking at me. That's a normal, it ain't me. Not me. It's the testosterone. It's that junk flowing through your veins. Okay? You know guys who are always getting in fights. He's so crazy. Nah, he's just not controlling that junk for us through his veins. He's testosterone driven. Next thing you know, somebody hurt him or he's locked up. Because he didn't know what was going on in his own body. Resist the urge towards violence. And then, these testosterone driven men often have a pistol. Oh, and help us, Jesus. Okay, and that turns into pow, pow, pow. And there was a shooting over here on the news, and there was a shooting yesterday, 
uh, over here, and, and nine shot last night, pop, 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 pop. Okay. That's testosterone driven males with a pistol in their hand. And, and it's just. Rather than when, when, when they have this feeling, I, I just need to stop somebody, it turns into. Okay. Understand what's going on with us. Channel the aggressive feelings into something positive. Like a job. Sports. My sons, get your, get your education. Your education will help you interface with this world and use that testosterone to make a living. And listen to this, my sons. You must make the rules for what cool is. Okay? You make the rules for what cool is. If you don't make the rules for what cool is, knuckleheads will make it for you. Okay? They will make it for you. And, and they will tell you stupid stuff is cool. Okay? I want you to have to know who you are, that you are uh, men who belong to the Lord, mm -hmm. that you are men of dignity and great worth. Mm -hmm. and, and you decide what, what cool is and what cool isn't. In that, be a leader instead of a follower. You know, I, I, I still stand amazed at the guy who th thought it was cool to have your pants sag way down. <laughs> okay? So that you walk around with your underwear showing, the half your butt showing. Okay? And, uh, and you're walking around holding your pants up. Okay? That's listening to the knuckleheads making the rules for what cool is. Cool is having pants that like and underwear show. <laughs> it's stupid. No, you decide what cool is and look him in the eye and say, no, that's not cool. People say, well, it's not cool. You so jacked away where, where, where you wearing your pants. And don't be afraid to, in the name of Jesus, say, look, you shut up. <laughs> Pastor Bill said, you shut up. <laughs> okay? Be strong men. Be leaders, not followers. And let me give you this. Proverbs chapter 18, verse 22, it says, He who finds a true wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. Amen, Mark. <laughs> look at the, the, that couple there. Um, uh, find one. Okay, so and, and, and in, in, in this, say, he who finds a wife finds a good thing. My sons, when you're in that phase of your life, don't just be looking for a girlfriend. Be looking for a wife. Don't be just looking for that woman you can kick it with. Look for a wife. Someone that you can spend your life with. A, 
And um, ladies, and as you are looking, so women, women are, are here most way before the guys are. The, the women are thinking about looking for a mate, a husband. Okay, and. Uh, my daughters look for a, a man who is looking for a wife. Not just a guy who wants a girlfriend. Okay? Because often, remember how I said men think differently than women? It's way different, okay? It's way different. I find uh, the girl who is living with her boyfriend, he doesn't, he's hesitant to marry her, but they just want to live. Let's just, let's, let's not get married, let's just live together, <laughs> okay? And uh, that's, that's, that's often him talking. And he is content to, uh, to live with you. And sleep in your bed. But he doesn't want to commit to you. That'll go on for years if you let it. And now let's let's get to the reason he doesn't want to to commit. And here it is. He's not sure if you're the one. Okay. He's not sure if you're the one. He still may have been mine. That guy will will be content to live with you and have sex with you. Why? Because you're there, you're available. Until he meets the right one. And then you get dropped. Because he's found the right one. And I've heard that so often how the women were with this guy for all these years. And then they had a little breakup and she found that two weeks later he didn't marry. What? what? <laughs> Mary? Yeah, yeah, he hung out with her until he found the right one. And then he dropped her and married the one he wanted. That's why I said, don't be a, a wife to a man who doesn't want to be your husband. See, the beautiful things in the Word of God, they are beautiful. And they are designed to protect us. They are designed to shield you from all of the nonsense out there that, that wants to come at you every day and you don't understand mm -hmm. the intricacies of it. Mm -hmm. The beauty of Christianity, the beauty of the Word of God, helps us to see the tremendous worth of the daughters and the tremendous worth of the sons. Amen. So, that's my last slide. You find a, a true wife finds a good thing. My sons find one. Again, don't be just looking for a girlfriend. Be looking for a wife, and, and for my sons and my daughters. Walk with God. Walk with God. This culture wants, us, wants you to believe that walking with God is irrelevant. It really doesn't matter that much. It's stupid. That's a stupid way to think. 
walk with God. He loves you more than you realize. And places a higher value on you than you've ever understood. And I'm trying to help you understand it today. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for what you're doing. Thank you for how you are moving in our lives. Thank you, O oh God. Our Lord, uh, um, keep your people. Keep us, O oh God, as, as your sons and daughters. Keep us. Help us to walk with you, O oh God. And help us to understand not only who you are, but who you say that we are. Bring us to the place where we see ourselves through your eyes. Lord, we thank you and we bless your name. And we pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, on this Father's Day, we want to honor...